Imagine you're diving into a research paper. At first, everything seems fine, but then suddenly you're hit with equations filled with symbols, summations, and integrals. It can feel overwhelming. But if you take a step back, you'll realize that most of these papers rely on just a handful of fundamental functions. In this video, we'll break down five key functions you'll encounter again and again, whether in machine learning, optimization, or physics. By the end, you'll not only recognize these functions, but also develop an intuitive understanding of them. Let's begin. First, and the most common function you'll find in literature, is the loss function. It is known by many names. In physics, this is called the Lagrangian. In optimization, it's the objective function. But in machine learning literature, it is widely referred to as the loss function. The main role of a loss function in machine learning is to optimize the weights of the network, making the model better. There are many kinds of loss function used for this optimization. Let's look at one of them, the mean squared error function. In a nutshell, it is the average of all errors squared. In the equation yi is the true label, and yi hat is the predicted label. Let's say we have neural network which detects cat and dog images. Now, we gave cat image as an input, but our model predicted that it is a dog. Then our MSE would be 1 divided by 1 into 2 minus 1 squared. Now, if we had 1,000 of such cat and dog images, then the error would be 1 by 1,000 into the sum of all those squared errors. This same idea extends to other loss functions. Some other examples of loss functions are root mean squared error, mean absolute error, cross entropy, binary cross entropy, etc. Now let's move on to regularization. So we have a loss function now. But what if we need to bake in some conditions that gives us more control over the optimization? This is exactly what regularization does. The two most common types are L1 and L2 regularization. The L1 regularization is simply adding a linear power of weights with the loss function multiplied with a constant factor lambda, which controls the strength of the regularizer. This induces sparsity, making some weights exactly zero. It's useful when your data has many irrelevant features. For L2 regularization, we take the square of weights and add them in a similar way. This encourages smaller weights, preventing large fluctuations in the model. Let's say we have a combined loss function. Now look at the L1 regularized loss. While optimization, we let both of the functions grow independently, and the point where they touch while optimizing is said to be the optimal weight. Similarly for L2 regularization. We can also add L1 and L2 together in the combined loss function. If we add them together, the combined loss function looks something like this. The final form of the loss function could be written like this, where first part is the mean squared error, and the last part is the L1 and L2 loss. Let's look at the progression of this while optimization. Regularization prevents overfitting, making models generalize better on unseen data. Next comes a really important function known as the KL divergence. Imagine you have two probability distributions P and Q, and you have to determine how different they are. KL divergence, introduced by Kolbach and Liebler in 1951, gives us a measure of this difference. This is the mathematical form of the KL divergence. If we look at it graphically, we can see if two distributions P and Q are similar, then we get a low number, and if they are exactly the same, then we get log one, which is equal to zero. If the distributions are very different, then we get a high number basically stating it grows as the distributions become different. This concept is used everywhere, from variational autoencoders, VAEs, to modern diffusion models. Next comes entropy. In 1877, an Austrian mathematician, Ludwig Boltzmann, gave a mathematical form of entropy to measure thermodynamic variables in a more statistical form. Then after about 80 years in 1948, Claude Shannon, an American computer scientist, gave the formula of entropy for information theory. It tells us about how uncertain a system is. Think of it this way. If you flip a fair coin, you have a 50-50 chance of getting a head or tail. 
so the entropy is high. If you always get heads, the entropy is zero, because there's no uncertainty in the experiment. I hope this makes intuitive sense. Don't worry, I'll make a separate video on this. Finally, we have Bayes' theorem, the foundation of probabilistic inference. So the Bayes' theorem gives us a way to calculate the probability of one event given another. This is the mathematical form, where the term on the left, P of B given A, is called the posterior, P of A is called the prior, which is the probability of occurrence of event A. P of B is known as the evidence, and P of B given A is known as the likelihood. The posterior is the probability obtained after the evidence or data has been taken into consideration, and prior is the probability before evidence is taken into consideration, which means our belief will change automatically as we have new information about the data. The intuition behind modern LLMs can be inferred from this like, predict the next word given a query. The Bayes theorem is a really fundamental and powerful idea in itself. Just for completeness, this is the general form of the Bayes theorem. So these five functions, loss function, regularization, KL divergence, entropy, and Bayes theorem are the backbone of many machine learning, physics, and maths paper. We'll dive deeper into these topics in future videos. For now, if you found this helpful, consider subscribing for more such intuitive explanations. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.